And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at Thebes the Tomb Raiders. Now, Thebes the Tomb Raiders is essentially a card game version of this game here, which is simply called Thebes. Notice the difference in size. Okay, this one is quite big. The other one is smaller. It's okay. Now, Thebes is a card game in essence, and so we're going to take a look at how it plays. And at the end, I'll talk. I mean, even if you've never played the board game, watch this. It will show you how it plays. Then I'll come back and tell you what I think of it and how it compares to the original. Here's the board for the game. And in this board, we have a giant deck of cards here. This card is, these are made up of different color backs. There are regular green ordinary cards. Uh, and then there are cards that correspond to the four sites that you can dig at red, purple, yellow, and blue. Each player is going to be given a backpack where they will get to store their artifacts. And then they're also given one of these uh, cards that allows them to dig at one of the four different sites. So they get one of each color. And they also get a wild one that they can use to dig at any sites. Unless you're playing with two players, in which case you get two of each color. Now, you need to have four face-up green cards here and you'll start the game that way. The problem is the top card deck here is red. So when it happens, I take this red card and add it to a red stack there. I then flip this top green card and we add it to the stack. Now I got yellow and blue and purple and yellow. So those all get added to their stacks. And we turn over this one and that gets placed here. And then red, another green one. Now this is an exhibition. So this doesn't, an exhibition, this doesn't go in the main area. This card goes off to the side. So this doesn't count as one of the four face up green cards. Here's another face up green card. And here's another face up green card. And then we check the top of the deck and it has a green card. If it didn't, if it had these other color cards, we would just keep placing them until the four different spots, until the top card was a green card. Now this track around the outside is not a scoring track, rather it's a time track, and these numbers stand for weeks. Now what you'll do is, players are gonna start here, and on your turn you will take actions, and these actions will take a certain number of weeks. So let's say blue takes an action that takes six weeks. Then green takes an action that takes four weeks, and it's yellow's turn, they take an action that's uh, four weeks also. Then it's red's turn, and they take an action that's two weeks. The next player to go is gonna be red again, because they're the farthest one back, so they take one that's two weeks. Then red gets to go again, they take one that's one week. Then yellow goes and takes one that's three weeks. Then green goes and takes one that's 10 weeks, all the way over there. Then red goes again. So you can see that if you take a long action, it usually gives you very good benefits, but the you know it will take you a while to go again, and if you take smaller actions, you will get to go more frequently. Now the actions aren't very difficult. One of the main actions is taking a card from the middle. When you take a card from the middle, after you're finished taking it, you'll replace it the same way, adding more cards to the piles underneath the board. Now what many of these cards do is they give you knowledge in a different type of area. So the yellow one, for example, gives you Egyptian archeology span knowledge. And you, so that's, this gives you two. This gives you two orange. That gives one purple. This card here is simply worth victory points at the end of the game, depending on how many of them you have. If you have all seven, it's worth 28. If you just have one, it's worth one point. If you see the little clock up in the top corner, that's how many weeks it costs to take that card. So you need to study for a while. And so there's many of these different knowledge cards in the games. There's ones, and there's twos, and there's threes. There's also ones that are general knowledge. These are basically wilds, but this, this doesn't count as a wild for any color unless I have the matching number of that color. So for example, if I have three yellow books and four of these, I would have six yellow because I can only use one of these for every yellow that I have. There's also these cards in the deck. This is basically another wild of the uh, permits to go out on an archeological expedition. There are cards that, are, um, there are other action cards that you can take. And I'm gonna talk about these in a little bit, but let's talk about going out on a dig. So let's say I'm going out on a dig and I decide to go into the purple pile. So I look at the cards that are placed in front of me and I have six purple knowledge and I have one 
of the general knowledge, so that's a total of seven. I also play an action card. Whenever you play an action card that has a cost, so this one has a cost of one, to give myself a wild one for this turn only. And so I have eight knowledge to be able to go. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna look at this chart here. And this chart has a lot of numbers, but it's not as complicated as it appears. You can see that I have eight knowledge. Now I need to decide how many weeks I'm gonna spend digging. And so I look at eight knowledge and I say, okay, I'm gonna spend eight weeks digging. That lets me draw six cards from the purple pile. So I'm gonna take the purple pile and I'm going to shuffle the purple pile first, and then I get to take six cards from it. So I turn over the first card and it's nothing. It's just rubble. I turn over the second card and I find an artifact worth five points. I get to keep that, hooray. A third card, a one, a fourth card, a four, a fifth card, a six, and a sixth card, a one. Not so shabby. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this card that was worthless and shuffle that back into the purple deck. So obviously the people who go there first are gonna have the best picks from what's in there. Though obviously not all the purple cards are in this yet, as more will come into this from the deck. And of course, when you go, you have to spend your permit card to get to the purple website. So um, you only can go to one of the websites twice and the rest of them you can only go to one time. There are other action cards that let you, um, there's a thief, which is misprinted in the game actually and in the rules. It should be a one one, which basically uh, you can buy it for one action and spend one to take a random card from a pile. Or the, uh, here we have the Tomb Raider, who is much more expensive at three and four, but can search through the pile and take a card of their choice. Now, uh, there are a couple cards included with the game, and let's focus a little bit on these cards here. These cards tell you the distribution of what is in each of the colors. So you can see here that orange has two sevens, and then a six, two fives, etc. And But if you look on the other side, yellow has an eight. The distributions are basically different. Purple, the highest, is a six, but there's two of them and three fives. So it all depends on which one you want to get. Now, if you have three blue artifacts, you can go on this, you can show it off in an exhibition, an exhibition. So exhibitions allow you to show things off. Here's another one that it's you, if you have two blues or two yellows. It costs seven days and you'll take this card which is worth seven points at the end of the game. This one costs nine days and is worth six points at the end of the game. However, if you have three blue artifacts and two purple artifacts, then it only takes you five days. And if you also had a yellow artifact, it only takes you three days. So if you wait till you have more artifacts, these are cheaper in essence, take less time to do, uh, but then someone else might get it before you. On the other side of the board, you have these where you can basically sell off your artifacts and get points for doing that. So here I can sell off two, they, I lose them permanently to get seven points or sell off three to get 11 points. That sometimes is worth it, especially if you have a bunch of artifacts that are cheap, like ones or twos. I'll gladly trade in a one and a two for seven points or three ones for 11 points. Finally, there are these professors that are at the top of the board. These professors are worth eight points each and as soon as someone gets four books of one color, they'll take this and, as, and then the card will pass around a table if you ever exceed someone else with the number of knowledge. So if I have the most yellow, and at least four of them, I'll get eight points at the end of the game. And so there's one for each of the four colors, and then there's one here for the person who simply has the most books of all, the most knowledge at all. So you're just the smartest of all, and you get 11 points. So the game will end when the deck runs out, when the draw pile runs out. At that point, you will add up all the points of artifacts that you've gotten, all the points of exhibitions that you've shown, all the points of these that you've traded in, all the points for the ones that you have majorities of at that point in time, and these cards here that are worth points depending on how many you have. The person with the most points is the winner. Oh, and also, as time moves by, you also get points for how far um, behind you are the person who's the farthest on the time track. And that's not, a, that's not many points, but it's a few points and might matter. All right, well, when comparing, what, what, just looking at the game on itself, it's a game that's super fun. It's really interesting because there's this, that time mechanism of moving around is a great mechanic. I don't know why people don't use that often, more often in games. It's only been used in a few games around the world in 80 days, etc. but it works wonders because you can take a great action and move really far and then you have to sit there and wait for a while while other people take actions. It's, it's, it's so smooth. 
behind the cards from the middle, it's, there's a race to get the, the most in the knowledge and get that extra points. At the same time, there's that other race. It's like, oh, okay, when do I go into that pile and dig for cards? The first person to do it will has a chance to get the best cards. But uh, there might not be that many good cards in the, in the pack, and I might not have as much, you know, if I, if I wait till I have a lot of knowledge, I can dig and get a ton of stuff. So all that works really well. The gameplay says 30 minutes in the box. I would argue and say that's 30 minutes for two players. But the game actually is a little bit longer, probably upwards of an hour, maybe even a little bit hour with four. However, I'm thinking I like this best as a two-player game. It seems to really pop with two players. Um, I played with four and it was okay, but there's just a lot going on between your turn. With two players, it's that back and forth as you're like, who's gonna go to this expedition first? Who's gonna do it? Who's gonna do it? Who's gonna do it? And there's also tons of ways to get points in this game, which I thought was fun. Comparing it with the original game. The original game has just fantastic components. Instead of decks of cards, you are drawing tiles from a bag. Um, instead of uh, a card, you have this little wheel and you spin, I'm gonna spend six weeks and it tells you. It just has this cool effect. And there's also a board you move around. So it wins in those regards, but this one also, the, the Thebes, the Tomb Raiders has, well, Tomb Raider cards, which lets you quick get in there and steal something out of a tomb, which is a neat mechanism because, again, you can use that early in the game or late in the game, depending, but it also has the, the biggest change is that the cards, as they move into the tombs, they're not all there right away. So you can jump in early, but if you wait longer, the, those tombs will get filled up with possibly bigger and greater treasure. There's obviously a huge element of luck in the game because, you know, you might just get super lucky and you might draw six cards and all six of them are rubble and garbage. And that's enough to make some people quit, but I just have, a, I have so much fun playing it. I love this. Now, the question is, which one am I going to keep? And I've thought long and hard about this because it really is tough. I really like nice components. But the fact is, the Tomb Raiders is a better streamlined game. There's small changes mostly, but they work. But ah, the components of Thebes. So I thought about it and I have to go with the new one. I'm gonna keep the card game and get rid of the bigger game, which is a sad thing. The thing is though, folks, I don't really, I can't justify owning both. They're so similar. So if you love Thebes, you're like, ooh, is this a new variation? Well, yes, it's a variation and that's about the extent of it. So pretty cool, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's really great, but don't expect anything brand new out of it. At the same time, and it looks like they took Thebes and made it a better game. So it depends on you, small storage space. This is obviously the one to get. Um, if you're looking for the best game you can get, this one, but if you're looking for cool components and maybe a little bit more immersion into a theme, then maybe Thebes would be the one to get. So anyway, that's Thebes the Tomb Raiders. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. It's Doug and Shelley from Garrett's Games of Geekiness, and Tom, shut, shut the, the door! door. Yeah. Yeah.